Hey guys, Jeremy Colgrove here, and I'm gonna bring you guys an awesome grass tutorial today that shows you how to make realistic grass to put in your seed. Let's get to it. All right, hey guys. Uh, first of all, this is the picture that we're gonna be trying to make today. It's just very aesthetically pleasing and kind of some cool colors, and uh, it'll be a real it'll be a lot of fun. So. Let's get into it. Before we start though, here's the final scene. This is what we're going to attempt to be making today. So hold on, because we're in for a ride. Alright, so let's open a new scene in Blender. Complete the default cube and light, of course. When do you ever keep those? So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need some grass, obviously. Um. I already have some grass modeled, and to save some time for you guys, I'm just going to import it in, okay? If you want to watch a tutorial on how to model grass, I'm sure there's plenty out there. So just let me find it here. Um, right here. Okay, here's the grass I modeled. You want to have as many groups as possible with kind of some variation in them so uh, so that your scene won't look too uniform. Um, also make sure the grass is nice and thin and, and, and tall. I see a lot of people make it too short and fat and it just doesn't really look right. So um, yeah, I'm going to remove the materials and stuff from here because I don't need that. Switch to Cycles Render, change some settings, flip the GPU. I should just do all this stuff and save it as my as my default Blender opening file, but I haven't done that yet. Too lazy, I guess. Okay, so now that we have our grass modeled, or if you guys are going to model it, go ahead and pause the video and model it, um, and then come back. We're going to set up some stuff. So let's. Let's get our camera positioned here, add a plane, scale about eight times, just the width of the, the grid floor, and uh, position our camera on this so it does kind of fit. Shift F, and you can go into this kind of camera fly view where you can move it with your keypad or your arrow keys, and uh, it's really helpful for positioning the camera just right. So, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subdivide it about 50 times. I'm sure you guys have seen this trick before, but it just helps save render time and memory. We're just going to delete everything that's outside of our camera. There's no need for it. And I'm not sure why, but when you when the camera is just in its default position, it's rotated in the y-axis by like a little tiny bit, and it just bugs the crap out of me. That should just be zero. I don't know if it's a bug or why it's rotated a little bit, but it, it's just it's off. So. Now uh, let's not waste any time, let's add a particle system, change it to hair, select advanced, now let's go down and we're going to choose our group of hair called grass. And of course they're all rotated weirdly. So what you want to make sure to do is you want to make sure to here to check rotation. What this does is it'll be a the rotation of the particle system hairs will be affected by the rotation of the object itself. If I turn that off, then it's not affected anymore. It's all, it is affected by the, the the rotation in the in the edited edited mode, but not the actual object itself. So set rotation on and rotate your hairs so that they're standing up on the plane. Perfect. Now we're gonna go through and change some settings. Um, I'm gonna end up changing this number from like thousand here to ten thousand later on, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Just just to save save it so my uh, viewport will run fast. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the random size to about 0.5. Random size is always good. So turn the Brownian to about 0.6. This just gives it a bunch of crazy kind of randomization as far as the rotation and size go and stuff like that. Now what I want to do now, I'm going to change the display to 100 to about 5%. So we're only seeing 5% of the hair strands. Of the, we're only seeing 5% of this number here. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this up to like... 10,000, alright, and this way 
by changing the display percent here, it's not going to freeze up my viewport. It'll run just fine. All right, so now we have a decent particle system set up, and we've got our hair on there. And let's let's um, we need to make sure that the it's not too uniform. Okay, so we're going to go down here to textures, and we're going to add a new texture. And I'm going to name this, uh, I don't know, just grass. Okay. So I'm going to go to the texture tab here, and I'm going to select particle system grass here. And this is the texture that I created. So I'm going to change this to clouds. And I'm going to go down here under influence and change the dent, select density and select length. What this means is it's going to, this, this, te this texture here is going to be overlaid over this plane and wherever it's dark there's going to be grass there's going to, it's going to affect the density and the length of the grass wherever it's white it's going to be long and thick so in this way using textures we can get a nice kind of randomization and not uniform grass over our plane and have it look have it look better okay so just to kind of see this a little bit better I'm going to change my display amount to I'm going to go 50 percent okay so you can kind of see where we have thicker grass and where we have thinner grass. You don't want it to you don't want to change yeah, uh, leave these all the way up to 1 though cuz otherwise the dis the uh, the length is going to end up being 0 in some places. You can see the ground. So set the length to like something that works like 0 0.7 and then the density to maybe 0 0.72. I might change the density. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is we have to make sure as well to increase the randomization. To select rotation, and you're only going to see rotation if you have advanced selected up here. So make sure that you have advanced selected. Okay, so under rotation we have this random phase amount, and we need should we need to set this to random. Let's see, does it not? I don't think it works unless I. Strange. Okay, well, I'm not sure why that's not working. I think it's already pretty random. I think we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Um. Okay, let's not waste any time. Let's get some materials. Okay, uh, before we do this though, I want to be able to view how my grass looks, how the materials are coming along, so I'm going to add a couple lamps. This is going to be our setup for lights. Okay, I'm going to put one light in the back. The back light is really important when doing grass because grass relies so heavily on translucency, so it's really important to have a nice strong backlight to kind of bring that out. And I'm going to change, uh, keep the size to 0.1, set the strength to about 8. I'm going to copy this and just kind of for a nice softer sh for some for some sorry for some softer shadows I'm going to turn the size up to about 0.3 and because it's bigger now we want to turn the strength down about 4 and I'm going to do one more kind of from over this direction so we have a general kind of light source coming from over here but with we get kind of kind of some different shadows I'm going to go 0.6 and maybe 2 okay that's good. Another thing too, because you want more density here, uh, where where the camera is, where it's closer to the closest to the camera, you want the most density. Where it's farther away, you can have it be thinner, and it'll still look just as thick. So we are going to jump into weight paint with the plane selected. Scroll down under weight tools and select weight gradient. Then we're going to click and drag. You can see it's going to make a gradient for us over the plane. That's great because the red means it's thicker over here, and as it gets more to the blue, it's going to get thinner and thinner. So now, under our particle systems, particle system, we go to vertex groups. Under density, we select group. And you can kind of see how it's more dense towards the front and less towards the back. Good. Now we can see how this looks. I'm going to check border, which means it's only going to render what's in the in the camera here which I think helps a lot and wow we have some really bright bright uh, lights 
I'm just going to turn these down a little bit. I'm going to cut them in half. That looks a little better. Okay, um, before we do anything, I'm also going to unwrap the ground plane because we're going to give that a texture later on as well. Alright, now with our grass selected, let's make a new texture. New material, I mean. So the simple setup, all right, the setup is pretty simple. We're just going to give it the typical defuse, glossy, with the translucent, and we're going to add things as we go to make it more and more realistic. Okay. I'm going to put that to solid just before doing it. So it'll run faster. Another thing, too, that you want to have is, is these, these this grass here is already already unwrapped, but while you're modeling your grass, you want to make sure it's unwrapped, and you can use a texture if you'd like, if you're going to be more, if you, you know, do more of a close-up shot or a mid-shot, it really helps to see the veins on the grass. It doesn't actually increase memory time that much, and for the amount of realism you gain, it's it's great. I am also, I'm going to use a texture for, for my grass, I just find that it helps add some realism. The texture I shot is really simple. This is what it is here. This is the actual shot I took of grass just off my iPhone, and then I used GIMP to kind of blow it up. All right, so we're gonna plug the texture here into the diffuse, the glossy, and the translucent, okay? Now as we go on here, we're just gonna be changing how just going to be adding stuff. Okay, so what I want to do now, as the, as the light comes in from behind the grass, obviously I don't want it to be the same color as my texture, because otherwise we're not going to notice that there's light coming through. So what I want to do is I want to add a mix RGB. And the reason I'm not just changing the color of the translucent to like, like this, I'm not just setting it to orange or a, a green or whatever, is because then we're losing a lot of the detail that's in the texture when there's light coming through, and we want to keep that detail. So I'm going to instead use a mix node, and I'm going to set it to multiply, and then this is going to be the color that of the translucent light coming through. So we're still going to maintain a lot of the dark spots from the texture, and uh, we'll still get a nice, a nice orange glow from it. So I'm going to turn the factor up to about 0.8. That looks good. All right, and similar thing uh, with the glossy here. The light coming off it is is fine, but we want the texture to do a lot of the work for us as far as what should look rough and what shouldn't. And um, I still want to maintain some of the color of the grass as well. So I'm going to go to color and I'm going to add an RGB curve and just drag it way up here to the corner. So it's going to increase the brightness basically of the texture and make it look super bright, but it's still going to maintain a little bit of the color. I'm also going to set my image texture here to the roughness. That way these little veins here will not be so rough and you can kind of see them a little bit better. And because grass isn't that reflective, I'm going to turn the mix shader here, my diffuse and glossy, to about 0.1. Good. And something that will help speed it up, or just kind of an optimization trick that I like to do, is I like to do this light path here, and then uh, put is diffuse ray into the factor, and then do a diffuse there so now whatever is behind the grass is going to be rendered it's not going to have to calculate all of this stuff right here for the back facing faces but because there's light coming through with translucent light coming through it relies on what what it calculates on the back of the grass to give us the picture on the front does that make sense like if I had a smiley face on the back of the grass and I set it to translucent you should see a smiley face. So it still matters what's behind the grass. And I still want the detail of the grass stems there, even behind it, but I just don't want to calculate like the glossy and the, the translucent you know, behind it. So I'm going to set, plug my texture into the diffuse. That way we still maintain a lot of the veins from our grass. Okay. And obviously we need variation. We need some, some color variation between grass clumps. So I'm going to add a hue saturation node and then to make a random thing we're going to go to input object info and here you can see a little random tab 
Okay, so now a little trick is to do math. There's tons of way to do it. There's tons of ways to do this, by the way. This is just one way. You're going to add a multiply math node and an add math node. We're going to multiply the value by a negative number, something really low, like negative 0.1. And then we're going to add to it a value like 0.45. That's what I found gives me kind of a nice orange green color. And then we're going to plug that value into the hue right there. I'm going to turn the saturation down just a little bit too. Okay, so this is looking really good. This is about about all it is. So let's apply this material now to each of our grasses. And I should name it here. Here we go. Beautiful. Okay, I'm now going to give the material the ground here a texture as well. It's important to give the ground a texture, not just set it to black, because when you do see the ground or it comes through the grass, you want it to look as realistic as possible. So I'm just going to navigate to my textures here. Uh, where was it? Here we go. Turn off the part system so I can see the ground. And that looks a little bit, a little bit too big. I'm just gonna go with something about there. Add a simple diffuse and glossy setup, and then just add a math node. And plug that into the displacement. Change this to about 0 0.5, 0 0.3. Okay, nice. That looks just fine. It looks like some dirt, but it's got variation. You know, it's just kind of a. It works. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna add my grass in now. And a lot of this is really just trial and error. You know, it's going back and playing with the settings and stuff like that. So I have three grass clumps, and this one right here, grass clumps. This one right here is longer, and we have a medium. We have a smaller. I, w I don't want the same amount of each of these three grasses on the plane. So what I can do is I can go down here to, where is it? Yeah, here. You clicked uh, use count. And now we can change the amount of grasses, we can change the ratio of grasses we want displayed on the plane. So I'm gonna set my short grass to 15, my medium grass to 15. So for every 15, so ever, for every 30 grasses, we're going to have 15 short, 15 medium, and one long. 31 grasses, I guess. Every 31 grasses. Okay, so that way we can kind of control how much of each grass is displayed on our ground. We, oh, save it. Oops, what am I doing? Tutorials are really hard to make. This is like the fourth time I've tried to make like a tutorial. It's just, it's harder than it looks, guys. It really is. And this is my first one, so hopefully I'll be getting better. But tell me what you think. All right, and let's let's give it a test render now and just kind of see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to keep my sampling on about 128. I've, there's no noise with that. It takes about five minutes, so I'm just going to pause the recording and Okay, let's render it. It's done. This really does not look too bad right off the bat. I'm pretty happy with this. I thought it was going to look way worse. You can see how when, when the grass gets shorter here, it also gets less dense. You can see that we have a nice variation as far as lengths go and taller grass to smaller grass and medium grass and things like that. And you can also tell that even though you can see the ground here, it doesn't necessarily destroy the realism of the picture as a whole. It actually still looks pretty believable. And if you wanted to, you could gra clump these grasses more to have it have it look more realistic, I guess. But it does take up a lot more memory. If you guys know what I'm saying, when you're modeling the grass, make it more more bigger clumps than just a just a single couple strands. But uh, cool. Some 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 things I like to do, and this is kind of my personal touch. Maybe when making nature scenes is to go inside the scene tab here and under color management under render view choose film 
this just darkens the shadows and kind of changes the tint and I like to turn the gamma way up and the exposure down it kind of gives it a almost haze over the picture but I find that cameras when you're taking it don't give perfect pictures like they render like you render you know so if you're trying to go for realism don't make it perfect you know it's okay if there's a little bit of almost color fading going on so something like that I think that looks pretty good yeah and it's pretty saturated too um, I might want to turn that down a little bit so a lot of it's just tweaking. Another thing with grass too that you want to do is you want to make sure you add a focal point, add depth of field. You want to have depth of field, you want to have something for your eyes to grab onto, something in the middle of the grass. I see so many renders of grass that, that don't have anything in there in, in their scene to grab onto, for your eyes to eyes to follow, you know. So um that doesn't really work. But yes, so add depth of field add a focal point, something for your eyes to grab onto. So let's do that. I'm going to add a plane axis. And I'm going to position it where I'm going to add my mushrooms. Uh, I'm going to put it about there. Following the rules of thirds, the rule of thirds, if you go to camera, you can go to composition guys and you can check thirds and you can kind of see it's kind of hard. Look, we, if we turn off the particle system here, there, you can see on the camera there's these dotted lines and it splits the camera up into thirds horizontally and vertically and the whole goal of thirds is to you want you want the focus the focus of your picture to be on one of these intersection points that these cross lines are making so I'm gonna position that somewhere generally about there whatever okay so now I'm gonna go back to my camera and under depth of field I want my focus to be on my empty I'm gonna choose f-stop under aperture type and set this number to something pretty low like 0.4 and this is kind of hard you just need to like try it out and see see what works and that might be pretty good oh, that's pretty high turn this down for some reason when I turn it down it gets less okay maybe it doesn't it was doing that with me earlier I would turn it down and it would get less uh, I would get less depth of field. I don't know. Something strange. Anyways. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I um I want to kind of change I want to change the translucent color here. I want to turn the saturation down because it's just a little bit too saturated for me. And I want to make it more of an orange color. Just like that. Very nice. Okay, I'm also going to kind of change the angle of my camera here to be more, more downwards, like that. Okay, so now let's model some mushrooms. I'm going to go on the next layer so we can see what we're doing better. I'm going to add a cube and this is going to be the base for our mushroom. I'm going to add a subdivision, subdivision surface, turn it all the way up to 6, tab into edit mode. I'm going to go into face select, select the bottom edge, and shift E to make it sharp. That way our bottom is sharp. Okay. I guess I don't really have to give you a step by step of what I'm doing here, just follow along. Trust that I'm doing something right, I guess. Add an edge loop, and that's basically it. I'm going to select this inner thing here and just hold Shift E, drag it up. There. Looks decent. Easy enough. I'm actually going to apply the subsurf now. I'm going to add a displace. It's new. Go to my texture panel, choose the displace. We're going to do clouds. And we're going to have to turn the size up. You can kind of play with this to make it whatever you'd like. Might turn this up a little bit more. Something like that. That looks good.
If you turn it, if you under displace, if you turn the texture coordinates to global, then as you move the object, the text, the displace texture will stay, and you'll end up with different variations. So if I'm going to have another mushroom, this will help because I'll have a different variation of that texture. Or you can set it to local, whatever, whatever you want to do. So, good. Uh, now I'm going to make a new material for it. There we go. And you kind of have to be creative when making this. It's, everything starts with a diffuse and glossy. You should just be standard when you make a material that this is what comes up. So what I actually did when making my mushroom is, if you take a look at mushrooms, it's just kind of, they're not really that colorful, some of them, but some of them look like they're like displaced, just random cracks and kind of, I don't know, textures and patterns over the mushroom. So what I did is I actually used a grunge texture, like this, and I put it in my diffuse and my glossy, and I plugged it into the displacement so you can see the cracks and edges in there and stuff. I'm not going to be able to see it, but. Oh, also we want to go to input, texture coordinates, and then vector, add a mapping node, and select, I think it was object. Uh, no. I'm just going to turn that off. Hold on guys, bear with me. I'm just gonna kinda position it here so I can see. Okay. Let me try generated. I think that works a little bit better. Yeah, I like that. Okay. It's gonna kinda stretch it, that that's fine. You can do this too if you want, I guess. I don't know. Or that. Or you can unwrap it. Works too. But okay. I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to duplicate it. And make another mushroom. You can uh, tab in here, turn on proportional editing, and just kind of bend it and move it to kind of make it its own its own mushroom. Kind of like that. Beautiful. I'm going to change my diffuse to a subsurface scattering too, because mushrooms are kind of that subsurface type. Material. Okay. Sure, let's try that. You can kind of see the stretch marks, but that'll be covered by the grass. So and then what I did is I kind of changed I changed the I changed the color of the image texture make it kind of a blue so it'll complement the grass which is a yellow. I turn my red and green down and that kind of brings up the blue. Ooh, a little too much. What am I doing? This needs to go way down. There, something like that. That looks good. Okay, let's add in our grasses. Control Alt B to remove the, the selected render view or the render box, the little red thing. I don't know technical names for things. Uh, let's see, what else did I want to do? Mm, that's good, let's give it another render. I'll see you guys when it's done. And voila! Here we are. This looks pretty good. You can really see how the f-stop or depth of field, whatever you call it, really kind of paid off. Looks nice. Um, not too happy with the place. I'm not too happy with the the placement of the mushrooms. I feel like they should be more kind of down from the frame of the top of the picture. And uh, it's too blue. And the grass is still a little saturated, but that can be fixed in the compositor. So I'm just going to go back here and kind of change things. 
a little bit more. I mean, the mushrooms are way too, uh, way too uniform. They're way too perfect. Crank this up. I don't know. Turn the texture size down. There we go. Now we're getting some funky things. Yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna make a second texture so I can. There we go. Just kind of messing with the settings. Alright, that looks good. I like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unplug it, the texture from the subsurface scattering. So we'll more mushrooms. something like that and I'm also going to turn the scale down to about 0.4 and just set this I don't know if I should make it blue or not nah I won't make it blue we'll do that in the compositor so okay beautiful 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 other than that I think I think it looks pretty good Yeah. All right. Let's give it a final render. Let's give it a final render, and I'll see you guys again when it's done. All right. This is the final picture. Sweet. Well, well, almost. We have to go to the compositor still and give it some kind of final awesome touches. So let's go through the compositor. Use nodes, auto render, and backdrop. Control Shift and click picture to make a view node and then if the backdrop is too big just hit fix or fit sorry fit we have a zoom here too that's helpful I didn't know those were there for the longest time and so I didn't use the backdrop so uh, I want a little bit of a, a fog kind of glow around the edge of this mushroom here to give it kind of that mystical look so duh, duh glare and then instead of streaks we're gonna go to fog glow bring the threshold down the size up it'll go eventually oh not the whole picture hmm here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to give myself a color ramp I'm just going to isolate that edge there. Good. Okay, and then I'm just going to blur it. Let's make my own glow here. Good. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply it back in. That didn't work. Oh, add. Yeah, there. There. And then this slider can now adjust the uh, how much glow you want, or the threshold of the glow. Good. I like that. That looks pretty good. I just want to select these. Okay, move it. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go to color and I'm going to go to color correction. And this is really helpful to adjust a lot of the various colors. Self explanatory. I don't know why I explained that. Really, it's all by trial and error. You're just going to see which value does what and if you like it. So I'm going to leave that one where it is. What does this one do? I don't even know. Okay, you can bump that up a little bit. I like that. So play with it. This is where your artist personality side just comes out. See what you like and go with it. And this is kind of the, how dark the shadows are. 
I'm just going to turn them a little bit down. Give some nice contrast. I sh actually, no. I like that. I think that's good. So play around with that as you please. And then I'm going to go to, and I'm going to add a, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get a, give it a vignette. So there's many ways to do this too, however you want to do that. I like doing it like this though. This works for me. This is pretty easy and it's customizable. So actually that should be about 30. Sorry if I'm going pretty fast here. Just try to keep up. I mean, this is pretty basic stuff and you don't have to do any of this anyways. So this is all just kind of personal touch. Okay. Mm, now that I'm looking at it closer, I kind of I kind of want there to be more saturation. Yeah, that was the slider. Something like that. I think the mushrooms are out of focus. Okay, I'm going to go change that, and there we go, guys, the final picture. And that's it, guys, how to make awesome, realistic grass in Blender. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Message me for any upcoming tutorials you would like me to make, and I'll see you in the next video.